Hello, I'm John, I'm on board Corrick. I'm just about to go out for a sail on a very bright November morning. We talked in an earlier episode about the points of sailing and one of the things I said that we do before we get going with that is we set our sails up properly, putting all the necessary controls in. This episode we're gonna walk through the controls on the headsail and the mainsail, starting with the mainsail. start position for this is we get our main ready to go and we have it all hanked on and ready and we have all of our reefing lines, the kicker and so forth all in the right position then we get ourselves such that we can go head to wind and gently hoist it and we'll go through that process now. This always works if you set it all up nicely and I like to do this bringing the head sail up with the sail out very slightly on the port side but I make sure I've got the main halyard ready to come in. I then make sure that the main sheet is released and has no weight on it. I then make sure the kicker is off, the Cunningham is off, and I also make sure the reefing lines and the clue out hole are all released. I normally release these beforehand, but um, just, just double check them all. I can then take the main in hand and with the wind very, very, very slightly, uh, well, just ahead or very slightly off to one side, pull it up so that it goes up nice and cleanly between the lazy jacks. Then a couple of turns onto the winch, uh, winch handle in. And then just a tiny little bit of weight. We don't know what the wind is like outside the harbour, but just, um, just, just finger tight at the moment. Um, and then it is very much a case of look at the other controls. So there's the clue out hole going on. That pulls the, uh, the foot nice and tight, as well as having the luff nice and tight on the halyard. Then a little tiny bit of weight in the, hal in the kicker. And then finally bring the sheet in and we are ready to then go out and see what the wind is like outside. Unlike the mainsail where we want to put it up head to wind, we can actually bring the headsail out on pretty much um, any he heading, so, so long as the wind conditions are right. If it's very breezy, you need to be a little bit closer to the wind. We are very fortunate today, it's not very heavy. I'm actually going to put the headsail out whilst we motor out of the harbour itself. What I need to do is I need to make sure that the, the lazy sheet is free to run and knots tend to have a very nasty habit of tying themselves up just when you're not looking at them. So I try to spend a lot of time just making sure they're always free to run. I've got... I make sure that the working sheet is also nice and free to run. I then turn around and make sure that the furling line is free to run um, uh, and coil that all down. There's nothing quite so unpleasant as getting that caught in the jammer just as it's about to roll out. And I put it round the winch drum just in order to uh, help it out. Then you can't quite see it there, but I've just released the jammer on the furler and I've got the working sheet in hand and controlling both of them at the same time, I fully in on the main sheet, ease out on the furler and because the wind's right on the beam, it's gonna go out nice and easily um, and just keep it all out under control. What you don't want it to do is to go out so fast that it wraps itself around the drum or gets a little bit of riding turn. But we've got it all easing out there, uh, nice and under control. Once we've got that out, we can just very quickly put just a little bit of weight on it. And in this particular case, what we wanted to do was uh, just get sailing so we could get the, the, the engine off um, once we were outside of the harbour. So this is us sailing along. We've got the main up, but we don't have many of the controls in. And as you can see on the leading edge of the sail, there's those wrinkles saying that our luff tension isn't right. What Nick is going to do just now is tighten up on the luff tension, which we were gonna do once we've got the main sheet off. So I'm gonna ease the main sheet off. The sail starts to flap. Nick can put the tension on and we're looking for a tiny crease just in the leading edge and I think it's there so we're going to call that a day and now what we're going to do is I'm just going to sheet this one in and that's looking a lot better except what we don't have is a whole pile of clue tension on so when Nick has finished tidying that up Sheet again. 
lets the main out. That's it, good. And now he's just gonna pull in and the clue has been put on there. And that means that our luff and foot are nicely tensioned and we can now sheet in on the main. And as that comes into the center, that, that looks good. Our telltales are just folding over because we're a bit off the wind, but that's them now flying nicely. And Nick can finish that off by just putting a little bit of weight in the kicker. So let me just get the boat flying nicely. And the last thing that Nick is going to do is he's just going to take up the weight on the kicker and that just brings the boom, puts a bit, bit of weight on there. So we've now got our telltales, oh, sorry I'm just a little bit off the breeze there, telltales flying nicely and the main is all very nicely tensioned. The very last control is the Cunningham. So Nick is going to just go up onto the, onto the mast. is flying very nicely. The last control we have on the main, and I'm sorry the cockpit looks like a little bit of a mess here, is the main track traveller. Now at the moment the wind is such that that is absolutely fine, um, but if we needed to, if we were over pressed, Nick would be able to ease the traveller down and that spills some of the wind out of the top of the sails, or he could take the traveller back up to the top and that would allow us to put the boom right above the centre line. Good. And I'm a bit off the breeze, sorry about that. So let me just get going. Yeah, about, about, that's, that's good. We've got the head cell flying and to be honest the telltales look quite nice but what we can see on the leading edge of the sail there is slight wrinkles. That is saying that the head sail tension isn't quite enough. So what Nick is going to do is he's just going to ease the sheet in order to take the weight off the sail and then he is going to gently put a bit of weight And as he's winding that, we see it and the creases have all come out. That looks perfect. And now he's going to sheet in again on the head cell. And as that weight goes on, all of our telltales start to start moving in just the right direction. And the boat that slowed down when we had uh, ease the head cell starts to speed up. The last control or the next control that we have here is to put a little bit of weight on the backstay. The backstay arrangement is just there and Nick is able to just give that a pull probably about that's a little bit more. Excellent. Okay and now top telltales, middle telltales are flying one of those just a little bit stuck. So having tightened everything up, as we came clear of the headland, the wind went back a little bit, and therefore we have eased the main and the head sail out, and we can now reverse some of those controls. So Nick is just going to ease the clue ever so slightly, which will increase the draft of the sail. And that clue just moved just a little inch forward, which is just nice. And now what he's going to do is just ease the um, 
main halyard tension. It's got the main halyard there. Just a couple of turns quickly on the drum. Just enough to hold the weight. And he's just going to lift the jammer. And ease that down a little bit. And as he eases that, the draft of the sail increases and the drive on the reach increases. Puts the jammer on and can tidy the rope away. It's probably worth introducing all of the controls in turn. So the first one is the main halyard. This grey rope here, currently on the winch drum, but also on the jammer, is the rope that pulls the main to the top of the mast, the main halyard. The next one that we're interested in is the clue out hole. So there is a very small piece of rope, oh sorry, a very small gap between the clue and the back of the boom there pulls the foot flat along the boom, indicated by Nick, thank you, and that is this line here which we can pull in and out like that. The next main control, main control, boom boom, the next control on the main that we're interested in is the kicker, and that is this line here, but also that line just there, so it's double-ended, so it can be released on either side, and that allows us to control the horizontal position of the boom. Important when running or reaching, less important when close hold. The very final control that we have on the main, and Nick is now going to go up the high side and indicate it. Whoops, Daisy. <laughs> So Nick is now going to indicate where the Cunningham is. It's that pulley there, just at the bottom. And if Nick pulls on it very gently, what it does is that you can see that it tensions the very bottom edge of the mainsail, tightens the luff. Okay, the last thing we want to talk about on the mainsail is the telltales, those little red strips. And as you can see, they are all flying very nicely. We've got a bit of fluttering going on on our main there. I'm just going to bring it in very slightly. That looks a lot smoother, so nice clean leading edge, nice telltales flying out the back, the foot looks right. That is, I would say, a nicely trimmed sail. So the other controls that we have, the head sail is controlled on this blue line here, the head sail halyard. What we can see is we've got our telltales flying and they're just a little bit lifting but we've also got the Genoa car down there that controls where the Genoa comes to. With us, that is pretty much set for the sail. So this is the number two Genoa. It sits pretty much there. We've got the sheet there and the very last control we have for the head sail, which also controls a little bit of the main sail as well, is the backstay. And that allows us to move the very top of the mast forwards or backwards, mostly backwards, in order to put more tension into the head sail, give it a cleaner angle into the wind. The very last control I want to talk to, going back to the main for a moment, is the main track traveller. This rope here that controls the, where the line is at the bottom of the main sheet. And what we can do at the moment is we can see that we're carrying a little bit of weather helm. I can ease that down it eases some of the wind that is pushing us over the boat sits a bit further upright the wind is being spilled out the top and the tiller goes much more towards the center where it really should be because of course anytime we've got a bit of tiller on we're applying a break and so as we've crossed over the uh, deep water we have a uh, reassessed and we can bear away a little bit more so we have eased out the main we've eased out the head sail we have already just eased the head sail halyard we've eased the backstay and again we are romping along there are a couple of ways to uh, get very comfortable with sail trim one yeah. that i would very much recommend is to go racing because that puts you 
uh, in a competitive situation where you can compare what you're doing against what's happening to other boats on the course. But but the other one is what we did to, today. Uh, myself and Nick went out. We weren't in a hurry to get anywhere. We were able to uh, put the sails up and just experiment with how well the boat went in certain winds, on certain headings, uh, with controls in certain positions. It was a particularly pleasant way to spend the day uh, and made us both a little bit more familiar with just exactly how the boat behaves uh, and how sensitive it is to the various controls. So as I say, uh, two ways of doing this, well at least two. One is go racing and I would highly recommend that. The other one is get out and spend some time experimenting uh, rather than rushing to get from A to B at the expense of the chance to do some experimentation. And having had a really nice day out on the water, we arrived back in towards Portsmouth Harbour uh, just as the sun was going down, uh, got through the gap against uh, a reasonably strong ebb tide uh, and got sailing again once we were inside. And it was nice to, to, to wrap the day up and just worth talking about um, putting the boat to bed. Um, I always try to get the main all the way up before we then drop it just so that all of the uh, reef lines are nicely out but what we did as we came in was we came in came head to wind that gave us the opportunity to just take a tiny bit of weight off of the headsail halyard ease the sheet and then the furler rolls up with this boat if you put a bit too much halyard tension in the, it, it gets a bit stiff to roll so we released that and furled it all in um, all nice and straightforward and then once that was fully home um, what we did was we continued going gently upwind and got ourselves in a position where we could drop the main once the head sill is away then line up to put the main away it's fairly straightforward to do this single-handed but it's a little bit easier with two um, Nick's just taken the turns off the drum I've taken it in hand he's gone up to the mast and as I lower it down he just uh, pulls the luff down sometimes the cars are a little bit sticky and then there's just the opportunity to pull the sail back into the stack pack as it comes down um, and of course uh, we're getting towards the end of the day and a very pleasant day it was but there's nothing like uh, getting off the water and getting away uh, nice and cleanly so putting the boat to bed and knowing that it's been put to bed in a way that means that the next time you go out you don't end up in that situation where you're trying to put the main up and finding there's a there's a reef in or some of the line is a bit i hope you found this useful and that it improves your sailing thank you very much indeed for watching